You're grieving, and you're in front of the temple, and you're praying about a nanny. Dad's not thinking about prayer at all. He's thinking about Gypsy. That's right, and, and, and everything here is timing. I mean, the fact is not that he had a mistress. Uh, it, Gypsy's trying to say it was casual. It's not casual when she's sending a selfie the day after, when they're texting during the funeral. It's not. It's the timing of, of her moving in eight days later of, of this whole thing. It's so clear to this jury that this is a bunch of hogwash. Whether or not they can get over the other side of it, we'll see, but it's very clear this is a motive. Again, and I've asked the question, Judy Ho, about just not liking Dr. McNeil. I think this story here is probably the most hateful thing he did. Does this convict the guy? Does it, does it piece together the story the prosecutors want told? Well, they need some more, but the dramatic testimony of the daughters, the statements um, that are coming in from inmates, uh, what the doctor said to a, a former mistress, all these pieces are circumstantial evidence. And as the viewers should know, circumstantial evidence sometimes can be as satisfying as direct evidence. Whether it is or not, in this case, we'll see. But the prosecutor is putting together pieces that say, you weren't up in the middle of the night and watch it snow, but you went to bed, there was no snow, you woke up, there was snow. It snowed even though you didn't see it. Yeah, I disagree with the panelists who said that it's not about Gypsy. I think it is about mm. Gypsy. Um, you know, she even told, you know, roommates that uh, a ways that they could get rid of Mrs. McNeil. Look, I think it's about the two of them. I think that when you put the two together, you get a, uh, uh, a, a cocktail for murder. That's what the prosecutor is mm. trying to say. It's not just about Dr. McNeil. It's about Gypsy as well. Uh, and I think they're doing a pretty good job considering the lack of scientific evidence of cause of death. Okay, well, let's listen to a little bit more from dad here is Dr. Howard Willis and he's on our brand new hit show HLN After Dark and he's talking about well, who's who was in control who's manipulating who in this relationship between Dr. McNeil and Gypsy let's listen you know, I don't know if she's credible or not, but if the jury buys it, it is nothing short of the linchpin in the entire case. You know, when you have the uh, opportunity uh, and the motive uh, and you have confessed, which may be coming up, you have a good case. But well, this is the linchpin. If they believe it, the jury can convict on the evidence. Right. I mean, the prosecutors, they're trying to piece it together. Science not great on their side. And he told them she died in January. Significant or not? Yeah, I mean, it's significant because uh, she's lying. I mean, and she's covering it up. You know, it appears she's a narcissist, uh, much like uh, Jody Arias, to, to name some, that might be able to assist the doctor or cover this thing up. Uh, you know, all these little factors are very small, but a lot of pennies can add up to a dime or a mm. quarter or whatever the price of admission is for Dr. McNeil to spend the rest of his life in prison. Well, they certainly be can, can be considered victims here. It's not just uh, Michelle McNeil, but her daughters uh, uh, that are victimized by her death. So, uh, yes, uh, they can. There is a good legal question, by the way, why the, the judge lets in that statement that she makes as to the ultimate issue in the case, which is that uh, she thinks he did it. I think that the, it's something the defense would have brought out to impeach her. So I think that's how it gets into the case, by the way. But look, these daughters are very, very powerful, emotional testimony for a prosecutor who doesn't have the scientific evidence he needs. So it's kind of hocus pocus. But uh, I don't think, by the way, Alexis is a ringleader, because I think what she what she did here was, was get everybody together and say, Say, there's something rotten in Denmark here, and I think it's dad. Well, and she was closest to the case, and I believe it opened up. Well, I don't think it's a wash, but I don't agree that the fact that she was silent, basically, on her dad uh, means anything here. Uh, you know, really, this, is, this statement was done a year or a year and a half after mm -hmm. the murder. That's plenty of time for the other daughters, especially Alexis, who this judge, by the way, found tainted her later statements. In other yeah. words, she couldn't testify live uh, today in court because the judge said, having lived with Alexis, the daughter who's the, uh, uh, in your words, the ringleader of all the daughters, but in any event believes the dad did it, tainted her testimony. Well, what's there to say she didn't taint this testimony like in a divorce situation where one party is telling, you know, bad things about the other side? That's what I think. I don't think that means much. Okay. And, and when you talk about little Ada, it gets it, it takes a real turn with the family dynamic. Her biological mom is Vanessa. Her. That's the daughter of Michelle and Martin McNeil, but Vanessa had some drug issues, couldn't take care of Ada, so Martin and Michelle McNeil, they adopt little Ada. That's the family tree in all this. And we come back, we're going to listen to Vanessa and the impact of her.